We continue our series of messages on healthy spiritual habits. During the period of Lent, as we prepare ourselves to celebrate the death and resurrection of the Messiah, Jesus Christ, we use this as a time to deepen our relationship with our Heavenly Father and to have a renewed appreciation for all that Jesus has done for us. We looked last week at how God speaks to us when we read His Word. And if you would miss that first message, I would encourage you to go on our church website, cbckc.ca, and to follow the link so that you can watch that first message. Today, we are going to talk about prayer. So quite logically, the first uh, message dealt with when God talks to us, and then today, when we talk to God. And so I want to begin by first talking to you about a call to prayer. I don't know if you realize it or not, but the Bible, particularly the New Testament, is full of places where you and I are commanded to pray and to be persistent in our prayers. Luke begins in Acts and he says the early church devoted themselves to prayer. Devoted themselves to prayer. Paul picks up on that in his writings and in Romans 12 he says, be constant in prayer. In 1 Thessalonians 5, he says, pray without ceasing. And Ephesians 6 tells us to pray at all times in the Spirit. Colossians 4, 2 says, for us to continually continue steadfast in prayer. So just as a basis of biblical interpretation, the more often a commandment is repeated in the New Testament, the more often a verse is given in the imperative form, which means it's not optional, we should really understand that it's important. And to have a thought repeated on six or seven different times in the New Testament should really drive it home to us. God's people ought to be a praying people. God's people ought to be a praying people. So how are we doing? How do you think Canadians are doing when it comes to prayer? Well, I want to put up a graph of a study that was done in Canada in 2017. Uh, that's the uh, latest statistics I could find. And you can see on the graph that 20% of Canadians pray daily on a regular basis. Only 20%. And so as Canadians, you would think, well, we're not doing very well when it comes to obeying the Scripture's command to pray without ceasing. But remember, that's taken of all Canadians people who are regular in church and people who aren't. If you were to look and, and change the sample size and just consider people who identify themselves as Christians, as followers of Jesus Christ, you would find that 68% of those people pray regularly and pray daily. Now, compared to the rest of the nation, those are really good statistics. And they would seem to emphasize that God's people are a praying people. But if you look at that sample size even more, you would see that if you were to break it down by age bracket, that you would find those who are in the age bracket above baby boomers are really committed to prayer. Baby boomers, my generation, are committed a little less to prayer. And Generation X, a little less. Can you see the pattern? The younger the sample size of the audience is, the less time they spend in prayer. 
In fact, you can break it down even further. And you can find that there's a big difference between university-trained individuals and those who have not gone beyond secondary education. And that people who have been to university are less likely to pray than Christians who haven't been to university. And I say that to simply say this. There is still lots for us to learn about prayer. And this morning, I hope that through looking at this message, that we will be able to do that. I want to read a few verses for you from Colossians uh, chapter 4 and verses 2 to 6. Paul writes, and he says, Devote yourself to prayer, being watchful and thankful. And pray for us too that God may open a door for our message so that we may proclaim the mystery of Christ for which I am in chains. Pray that I may proclaim it clearly as I should. Be wise in the way you act towards outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity and let your conversation be always full of grace seasoned with salt so that you may know how to answer everyone i want us to focus our thought on the first verse that i read for you the verse that tells us that reminds us devote yourself in prayer being watchful and thankful. What did the Apostle Paul mean when he said, devote yourself in prayer? Well, devote really means to give yourself to the point that you are willing to persevere in an action. So if you are a devoted spouse, then you are going to continue to love your mate No matter what, you are devoted to them. In fact, the word that we get devotions from that many of you use to um, refer to your private time with God comes from this word, to be devoted to God. Literally, that word means to be glued together. To be glued together. You remember when Crazy Glue first came on the market that you would Well, maybe some of you did what I did. You'd take two pennies and you'd put a little dab of crazy glue on them and then you'd stick these two coppers together and you'd leave it that way for a second and then you would see if you could pull them apart. Just how strong is that crazy glue? And I don't know about any of you, but I could never get the pennies apart when I tried to pull them. Now, in our society, we've moved on from crazy glue, and we now have something called gorilla glue that's supposed to fasten anything that you want glued together. Well, that word helps us to understand what Paul had in mind when he talks about us being devoted to God. He means, I want us to be glued to God. I want you to picture in your mind a little child, a little boy or a little girl, who wraps their arms around their mom or their dad's leg when they're trying to work in the kitchen or work in the shop and just grabs a hold and won't let go because they don't want them out of their sight. This is what it means to be devoted to God. Paul goes on and he recognizes our frailty. He recognizes how difficult it is for us to be devoted to that level. And so he uses another word. And he says, be watchful. Now in his mind, he was probably picturing the Old Testament when they had citadels around their walled cities. And a guard had the responsibility of staying up on the citadel and watching to see if their city was going to come under attack. And that watchman needed to be on high alert. That watchman needed to be careful that they didn't fall asleep 
Because if they fell asleep and their city was attacked, attacked, there would be no one to sound the warning. And Paul recognizes how easy it is for us to spiritually slumber or sleep. How easy it is for us not to be devoted. And so he reminds us here, be watchful. Again, to use the analogy of a little child, you can picture a little child looking out the living room window, peering out, waiting for mom or dad to to come home from work. And you can see that as they watch, that if mom and dad are just a little late, they may become worried. They may become preoccupied with something else. And they may give up watching and go on and, and watch TV instead. Paul is saying that we need to be careful that the affairs of our lives don't keep us from being devoted to God. That we are to be watchful, careful, paying attention because we recognize how easy it is to slip away. And then Paul just kind of throws in another command and he says, be thankful. Be thankful. When you come to prayer, have an attitude of gratitude. He seems to be reminding us that if we look at life that we experience as part of God's blessing, that will just well up with inside of us a desire to say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Be devoted. Well, Paul talks then about the extreme importance of us praying. But I would like us to go on now and to look and see what does it mean to pray? What exactly does it mean to pray? I would like to be very practical in this morning's message. Because praying at its very basic level means having God's ear. It means having God's ear. That's an expression that used to be used quite often. Can I have your ear for a moment, we might say to someone else. And that saying oftentimes refers to a person who's in a position of authority. Uh, Maybe it's the foreman who's overseeing a group of laborers, and one of the laborers says, can I have your ear? Which is code for, let's go away where no one else can hear, and let me talk to you and tell you what's on my mind. And I want us to understand today that this is a perfect description of what prayer is. I want you to think about that for a second. God speaks mainly through his word. But wonder of all wonders, he wants to hear from us. Stop to think about that for a second. The creator of the universe, the king of kings, the lord of lords, the one who rules over all rulers, says to each one of us, you can bend my ear anytime you want. You have my ear. In his book, David Mathis says the following, The God of grace covers our lives with his unexpected kindness through people and circumstances, in good times and bad. And he showers us with unforeseen favor in sickness and in health, in life and in death. We experience it. This is the part of the quote that I want you to pay particular attention to. We experience this every day. Whether we recognize it and appreciate it or not. But he often has his regular channels, the means of grace, the well-worn pathways along which he is so often pleased to pass and pour out His goodness on those waiting expectantly. Prayer is one of those pathways. Prayer is one of those pathways. Do you understand what this passage is saying? 
or what this quote is saying? This quote is reminding us that God's blessing we experience every day. Whether we pray or not, God showers us with His blessing. And if we look around our our lives, even in the midst of COVID, we can see how true this is. But there are special channels. There are special opportunities that He gives us. And one of those channels, one of those opportunities is prayer. When we come before God and talk to Him. The God who says to each of us today, I like the sound of your voice and I want you to come and talk to me. Why does He do that? Why is that so important for us today? Because we recognize that God desires relationship from us. God desires relationship. He wants to enter into us into us as family. From the time He puts His Holy Spirit in us, it causes us to cry out to Him, Abba, Father. Father, dear Father. That's the type of relationship He wants us to have. And we will never understand prayer until we understand it as part of that relationship. Just as we have human relationships and communication is a big part of them, just as in our human relationships we require times of of listening and times of talking, so the same is true in our relationship with God. We need to see prayer as extremely relational. What a privilege it is for ours to have Our Creator want to talk with us. But there's a difference between the relationships that we have with each other and the the relationship we have with God. With each other, we are peers. With God, the Creator, we are the created. With the King of kings, He is the Lord and we are the servant. That needs to be the frame of our mind when we go and talk to God. Present requests to God? Yes, He encourages that. But even more than that, God wants a deeper level of commitment from us so that prayer expresses our dependency upon Him. Prayer is so deeply relational. Prayer is is not just treating God as a genie and rubbing the lamp whenever we have a need. That's a small part of prayer. It's not just what we can get from God. It's how we can bless God in relationship. C.S. Lewis has said it best in this quote. He said, Prayer, in the sense of petition, asking for things, is a small part of it. Confession and penitence are its threshold. Adoration, its sanctuary. The presence and vision and enjoyment of God is its bread and wine. Do you see what Lewis is saying there? He is saying that prayer is an opportunity for us to enjoy God. To just bask in His fatherly love for us. That we see that this extremely relational prayer is a time when we will want more of God. We will see that God is holy and we will worship Him. We call that adoration. We will see that God is merciful and we will repent. And we call that confession. 
we will see that God is gracious and we express that appreciation with thanksgiving and gratitude. We will see that He is loving and we will petition Him, praying for our own needs and praying for the needs of others. That's what prayer is. Prayer is bending God's ear. Prayer is calling out to Him as our Heavenly Father and saying, I am so blessed by you. Prayer is the opportunity that we have to just deepen that relationship to new levels. And the longer we live, the deeper and the more in love we are with that relationship. Earlier in my message, I explained to you that older people tend to spend more time praying than younger people. And there's a reason for that. It's the same reason why people who have been married 50 and 60 years know each other so well and are still deeply in love and deeply connected. That happens in our relationship with God. But it won't happen unless we are people who are committed to prayer. Committed to bending the ear of the Almighty. Committed to coming before Him regularly. Not just with a prayer list, but using prayer as an opportunity to have a conversation as a servant to his, his or her master being able to grow closer and closer together. And you might think today, well, that's so wonderful. How did that happen? Why is it that God offered us the opportunity to do this? Well, do you notice when people pray, when you pray, you end your prayers with this phrase, in Jesus' name, I pray. In Jesus' name, I pray. Why do you do that? You do that because Jesus made it possible for you to have that type of relationship. Jesus who died on the cross so that we could be forgiven. Jesus who rose from the dead, guaranteeing that He was God and showing us that one day we too will rise from the dead and experience the new creation. That same Jesus who this day, right now, while we worship the Father, is at His right hand, interceding, mediating for you and me. Why is all of this possible? Why do you and I have the privilege of entering into relationship with the Almighty? It's all because of Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, sweetest name I know. How true that is. As you consider that today, I encourage you to spend time in prayer. And if you are like me, you find that it's so easy to fall into a routine where it sometimes it, it loses its meaning and we become more content with checking the box and the outline that we're following that we prayed today and, and read certain Scriptures. But a prayer life with Jesus is so much more than checking a box. We need to strive to, to keep that relationship fresh. Just like in our human relationships, it's so easy to fall into a, a comfortable routine that after a while loses its meaning. We need to be careful that doesn't happen in our relationship with God. So we strive to keep it fresh by mixing things up a little bit. It's important for us to have a regular time and place when we pray. I can't emphasize that enough. When we look at prayer, we look at prayer in two different ways. The first is having a regular time and place. To figure out how the rhythm of our life works for us. When is that time? Maybe that time is first thing in the morning before we do anything else. Maybe it's last thing at night before we drift off to sleep. 
Maybe it's when we get home from work after we've had our supper meal and we'll want to sneak away. Jesus told us that we are to go into the closet and pray. Time spent just between us and God. Quality time. Meaningful time. But if we find that that regular time is becoming routine, maybe we want to mix it up a little bit. Pray at a different time of day. We also not only need to schedule time of prayer, but we need to have times when prayer is spontaneous. When we're driving in the car, I always should add, make sure you pray with your eyes open. When we're in the car, when we're stopped at a stoplight, when we're waiting in line at the grocery store, when we have a few spare moments, those are the times that we can offer, offer spontaneous prayer. When we're driving through a, a neighborhood and we know that people who live in the houses, we can offer up a prayer. That's an activity that pleases God. So prayer, scheduled and spontaneous. Also, we need to have time when we pray with others. We need to have time when we pray with others. It's good to hear the prayers of others. And I know that there is probably no harder discipline to practice in our life than praying out loud in the presence of others. If there is ever an activity that's going to make our palms sweat and our knees knock, it's going to be praying out loud in the presence of others. And that's probably the question that I'm asked most often. How can I become comfortable praying out loud? I always say the same thing. Before you can ever pray out loud in front of people, you need to get used to the sound of your own voice. Pray out loud at home by yourself. And then you'll find it much easier. And the second step is to find someone who loves you unconditionally. So that you know that even if you mispronounce a word or uh, don't finish a sentence, they're not going to judge you for it. And then after you've taken those two steps, then you may want to try praying in a larger group. What does that do for us? It encourages us. It encourages us when we hear the prayers of other people. To use a sports analogy, here's what it's like. It's like being a Boston Bruins fan in a room full of Montreal Canadian fans. After a while, we get tired of them hearing them say how many times the Montreal Canadiens have won the Stanley Cup and how few times my Boston Bruins have. And how good it is to get and leave that room and to just go in a room full of Boston Bruin fans so we can talk about the glory years of Bobby Orr and the great defenseman that he was when they actually did win a cup. Or we can talk about Brad Marchand and the current Bruins as they've won a cup and been to the Stanley Cup playoffs two other times. We can do that without feeling the judgmental stares of those Montreal Canadian fans that say, hmm, you can't hold a candle to my team. In the same way, out there all day, every day, we hear conversations that make us feel like we are in foreign territory. How good it is to come together with other believers and to hear them pray to the God that we love as well. To hear them pray about things that concern us and to be able to pray for them. They say, thank you. Prayer needs to be both public and private. It needs to be both scheduled and spontaneous. And so I conclude my message today by simply asking you, will you have the ear of God? Will you bend the ear of God? Will you use this great privilege to deepen your relationship with God? And I have a particular challenge for you today. For you in person and you who are watching online. If you are watching online, I want you to respond to this simply by typing in, I will. And to those of you who are listening, I want you just to simply and very quickly raise your right hand in response to this question. 
And here's what I ask you. Will you spend the rest of the month of March one time each day praying without asking God for anything? Will you commit to praying to God once a day, every day, with, throughout March, and purposely say, God, I just want to bask in my relationship with you. I don't want to ask you for anything. I just want to appreciate you and thank you. I want to express in gratitude all that you've done for me. I want to deepen our relationship so that I can appreciate you as my Father, dear Father in heaven even more. Will you make that commitment today? If so, will you rise, raise your right hand in agreement today? Once a day, every day of March, pray and bask in God's relational love for you. Thank you. You can put your hands down now. Let's close our service with prayer. Father, thank you that you have blessed us in many different ways. But one of the channels of your blessing is prayer. Forgive us for the times that we've only talked to you when we wanted something. Today, we commit ourselves to you. We just want to bask in your glory. We just want to thank you. And so we commit to doing so once a day, every day in March. Father, hear our prayers. And for some listening today, We've talked about a relationship that they do not have. And Father, I pray today that you will speak to them, allowing them to pray this prayer. Father in heaven, I want to enter into a relationship with you. I recognize that Jesus paid the penalty for the wrong that I've done. And I no longer need to live as an alien when you welcome me as a citizen. I no longer need to live as a foreigner when you will adopt me as one of your children. Today, O oh God, I ask that Jesus would be my Lord and Savior so that I can develop this relationship deeper. For I pray in his name, amen. If you prayed that prayer and are watching online, we have someone who is willing to talk with you and to pray with you. You just need to phone the number that is on the screen. For those of you who are in person, if you need to talk to me, I would encourage you to contact me this week, and I would love to talk to you about ways that you can deepen your relationship with Jesus. Uh, so when you get home in time, uh, you'll want to join us as we dive deeper and talk at another level about the whole idea of prayer. And now, until we meet again next week, I pray that God would bless you, that he would let his face shine upon you, and that he would hear your prayers. Amen.